Hey guys, Max Scoville here for Rev3 Games. One of the biggest games of the year is upon us, Assassin's Creed 3. We've all been expecting this one and waiting for it eagerly, so uh, let's take a look at my review. Assassin's Creed 3 is easily one of the most anticipated video games of 2012. Obviously, it's eagerly awaited by the millions of Assassin's Creed fans worldwide, but on top of those millions, the new setting, hero, and time period of the latest sequel have caught the eye of plenty of newcomers to the series. Assassin's Creed 3 picks up right where Revelations left off, which is to say, immediately following a cliffhanger. Desmond Miles and company are trying to prevent the end of the world while on the run from the evil Abstergo Corporation. If this is your first foray into an Assassin's Creed title, be prepared to do some homework or be utterly confused, because the whole the last episode of Desmond Ball Z recap isn't too thorough. From there, Desmond hops back into the Animus and it's business as usual, more or less. A brief tutorial explains the basics of running and jumping and climbing. AC3 is running an all-new engine, which features completely new animations and some slightly modified controls. The free running has been streamlined, and it looks and feels fantastic. While previous games have players mostly clambering over man-made architecture, 3 introduces a more natural element with the frontier, and with it, some of the best tree climbing I've ever seen in a video game. Previously, free running was done by holding a trigger in one of the face buttons, and it's since been simplified to just holding the trigger, which is a massive improvement, and Connor's fluid movement through the environments is immensely satisfying. Combat has also been retooled. It's still a familiar counter combo system, but a well-timed deflection will now allow a moment of slow motion, which can be used to throw, disarm, or attack an enemy. The killing blows are absolutely gruesome and definitely won't disappoint bloodthirsty fans of video game violence. The main campaign is made up of 12 sequences, broken up into several missions each, as well as a slew of naval missions, side quests, and a pile of in-game collectibles. If you're looking for a game that'll keep you occupied, you should have no trouble squeezing 40 hours of gameplay out of Assassin's Creed 3's single player, if not more. There's also a fantastic open-world action game, but it's hidden behind several hours of fairly rigid campaign missions, and the game doesn't properly open up for a while, which might be a turnoff for people itching to explore. Visually, Assassin's Creed 3 is impressive. The team at Ubisoft meticulously recreated a chunk of Colonial America, and their attention to detail is commendable. Unfortunately, if you look too closely at some of these details, you might notice that the graphics aren't exactly breathtaking. In addition to some gross textures, there's also a weird, spongy, speckled effect that gets used for some shadows, and while I think it was meant to lend a more painterly aesthetic to the game, it's more distracting than anything else. Also be prepared to run into some graphical glitches. A massive addition to Assassin's Creed 3 is naval warfare. From a technical standpoint, it's absolutely brilliant. The ocean and weather conditions make simply maneuvering your ship around a totally unique experience, like a cross between flying a kite and moving heavy wooden furniture that has guns on it. The actual warfare component is so sluggish that it borders on turn-based, but downing an enemy ship is extremely gratifying when you pull it off. The campaign only forces players to embark on a couple naval missions, so if you don't have your sea legs, fear not, the rest of the boat stuff is optional. As cool as I thought the naval stuff was, there's no denying that it's a huge departure from usual assassin gameplay, to the point that it almost feels like a part of another game that's just sort of thrown in there. It's apparent that the Assassin's Creed series is made by and for history buffs, as well as gamers who want a complex story, but portions of the game feel as though they backburner gameplay for the sake of exposition. Numerous missions force the player to follow an NPC to a particular location. The destination isn't marked on the map, and straying too far from your companion will cause desynchronization. It's really not a whole lot different from being on a guided tour of one of those historical villages. A similar frustration is sequences that don't allow for deviation from a set strategy. I'm fine with getting penalized if a target I'm chasing escapes, but you'd think a parkour-themed open-world game would allow a little more wiggle room for exploration and experimental tactics instead of just linear foot racing. If I'm playing a game about a badass assassin, I'd like to feel like a badass assassin, not just a guy who's frantically running to catch his bus. Obviously, these are gameplay elements that I found personally frustrating, and everyone's got different tastes, so it's gonna kind of vary person to person. But I think the problem is that Assassin's Creed 3 seems like it's trying to please everyone at once, and in doing so, it just comes across kind of erratic and uh, inconsistent, as opposed to being properly varied. It's sort of like Jack of all trades, master of few. The world of Assassin's Creed 3 is broken up into four main areas. There's Boston, New York, the Frontier, and the Davenport Homestead. The Frontier is a massive, sprawling chunk of forest, which is a lot of fun to explore, and is completely transformed by the seasons changing. Davenport Homestead acts as Connor's home base with a big backyard. Of course, multiplayer is back, and it's bound to be a crowd pleaser. Continuing the tradition of competitive stealth, AC3 adds two new modes, Wolfpack and Domination. Domination puts two teams of players on a map populated with NPCs, and the objective is to gain control of one of three areas by blending in with the crowd. Players on the team in control of an area can kill opponents attempting to infiltrate, while they can only stun their attackers in defense. 
There's also Wolfpack, which is a competitive mode that plays like an inverse horde mode. Instead of fighting off waves of enemies, a team of four players must work together to assassinate groups of targets in unison before time runs out. Instead of taking the whole, everybody kill something together, this puts an emphasis on proper timing and teamwork, and as opposed to just indicating when the next wave is going to show up, the countdown timer creates a real sense of urgency to rush to the next set of targets. If you're a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed series and you've been looking forward to this release, you've probably already decided if you're going to buy Assassin's Creed 3. And if you do, you're probably going to have a lot of fun with it. But if you're new to the series or you weren't crazy about the other games, this one might not win you over. Instead of examining the elements of the previous games and deciding which worked and which didn't, it seems like the developers were more keen on implementing a bunch of new ones on top of a familiar format, which is sort of like adding a new wing onto your house instead of renovating what's already there. Again, Assassin's Creed 3 is by no means a bad game, it's just not as great as it could have been. It's easily the biggest release in the series, and if you demand a certain amount of playtime in your games, you'll definitely get your money's worth, but what could have been a sleek, graceful game is instead bogged down by how ambitious it is. If you're on the fence about whether or not you want to buy it, do yourself a favor and try it first. Assassin's Creed 3 is one of the biggest games of the year, so chances are one of your friends is picking it up. So, there you go. Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, just one of the many games that's coming out this holiday season. You should uh, stay tuned right here to Rev3 Games. We're going to have a ton more reviews. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them below in the comments. You can also get at me on Twitter. I'm Max Scoville. I will see you guys around.